Welcome to the Adventures of Alcaraz podcast. I am Julian Alcaraz. And I'm Miranda Alcaraz. And this is your Alcaraz pregnancy update week five to six. I am six weeks pregnant now. You made it. Six weeks. I know. I was really antsy about getting to six weeks because I do something that I would tell someone never to do, which is Google everything and try to figure out like the statistics for miscarriage and everything and I know they're like weeks four to six is a really higher likelihood time and it drops pretty significantly at six and then pretty significantly again at eight mm -hmm. so yeah this is um I was excited to get to six for sure and um we haven't heard the heartbeat yet that's not going to happen until this week hopefully it'll happen this week but technically at week six you should be able to hear it Nice. So just knowing that that's most likely going on in there, it's also nice. How big is he? Her? Um, well, How according to my baby bump app, he, the baby is um, the size of a sweet pea. A sweet pea. A quarter inch. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. How have you been feeling as far as tiredness goes? The tiredness was way worse this week for sure. It was. Um, I felt like it too, actually. I actually even took a couple naps, which is not something that I normally do. Mm -hmm. I would say the the only time in my adult life, especially like since we've been together that I've taken naps is in the first trimester of pregnancies. I didn't even really take naps after Knox was born. No. Too much. Really like right. I didn't like do the whole thing where it's like sleep when the baby sleeps because we were always working. But the first trimester sleepiness has gotten me already both times. Yeah. How has like uh, the nausea been? I felt like the nausea wasn't as bad this week as it was the week before, actually. Right. So um, I don't know why, because I have read that it gets worse between like this time and like eight to ten weeks, but it hasn't been as bad this week. Okay. And how do you feel about like your eating? How's that been? Any changes? Any cravings? Any mm -hmm. random things that people would usually be having around this time what do you think any difference from the first time to this time i really do think that a lot of the nausea issues and a lot of the i don't really deal with cravings as much um is because i'm so scheduled with my eating and i just don't allow myself to get super hungry i did um i think it was this week when we were filming some of the stuff for the vlog or i was filming on my phone i did have a time where i went a lot longer um than I had anticipated uh, without eating. I was here actually at the office and I think I went like four hours without eating. Oh wow, Which is long gap. for me. Yeah. Um, and I got, that was the most nauseous I got and it wasn't in the morning, it was in the evening. And I could see how if people aren't on a regular schedule, like they just kind of live a life where they just kind of eat whenever they're hungry, that they could experience nausea more and the cravings and stuff more. For sure. Because I, I am hungrier than normal, but as long as I just keep eating on my regular schedule, then I don't ever get, like, overly hungry. How many meals are you doing again? Four. I do three meals and a bar. Okay. And are you still doing your shake? Not, well, when we're not out of everything, I yeah, I do my post-workout shake. Okay, so three meals, a bar, and a shake when you work out, a post-workout shake. Yeah, and I get asked a lot. Um, I, I got asked a lot when I was pregnant with Knox, and then I still get asked a lot even though people don't know that I'm pregnant this time. When you were pregnant, um, what supplements did you use? And I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor and all supplement companies will be like, you know, check with your doctor or whatever, because no supplements have been tested on pregnant women like that. Those tests are so expensive, but I still used protein powder and I used um, the post-workout carbs build from Progenix the whole time I was pregnant with Knox. I mean, Knox drinks them right now. <laughs> he does. He loves the protein shakes. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I get people who DM me asking like about like pre-workout and stuff like that, or like, should I take creatine? And I'm like, why yeah, that's interesting. would you do that? If you're not allowed to have coffee, pre-workout's probably like out. Mm -hmm. um, wow. When I was filming the vlog uh, this morning, I was talking about the BCAAs from Forte Elements. Oh, nice. Okay. So the branch chain amino acids, because um, I had a goal um, last time I was pregnant, I didn't want to lose a bunch of muscle. And I know that's super common just because the intensity is lower. Eventually the weight that you're using is a lot less and uh, your body's just working so hard. So chances of you losing muscle mass are going to be 
pretty high. Um, and BCAAs are supposed to help with that. You do get them through food, but hey, like any right. little help and it's they're they're tasty. So yeah. the BCAAs through Forte Elements, which is the same company that I um, get my uh, prenatal vitamins from. So they're safe for pregnancy and uh, yeah, it's kind of like my little treat when I'm working out. Have you put more thought into like it being boy or girl or like if the reality is another boy or the reality is another girl? Like, have you thought more about that? So, I mean, I've thought about it and I have days where I like really latch on to one or really latch on to the other. Um, I do think the likelihood of it being a girl is much lower given both of our families. Like you only have a brother. Mm -hmm. I have four brothers and one sister. So out of what is that? Eight kids. There's only two girls. Mm -hmm. in both sides of our families um but who knows what's meant to be will be i remember last weekend at the meetup we saw what the age difference would look like with a perfect example in front of us we had some uh, two little boys and they were three years apart and they were so cute they were cool huh they were so cute but they were so different yeah like their personalities and that's just you can see like i mean they have the same parents Mm -hmm. but they were so different from each other like one was just like super competitive you could tell and everything and the other one was just so sweet um yeah that was cool to see that That was really cool to see they were buddies they were they were still close enough to be buddies how's the uh I know last week you talked about like how lonely this process is, especially since not a lot of, I mean, we've told more and more people that are around us. So that kind of helps a little bit as far as that goes. But how does it feel now? Like going every week, you know, that you've been getting more pregnant. I know your body's changing still. Um, And how's that been affecting you? (sighs) I would say the, uh, the biggest struggle that I've been having um, this week is I've been really frustrated with myself because I'm so out of it that I feel like um, I'm having a hard time doing my job, Mm -hmm. like my actual work for street parking. Mm -hmm. And I like, I'll forget something and then, you know, someone will remind me or um, what, what did I do? I did something like completely wrong. I messed up like one of the posting schedules because I was doing it in bed at night. And I was normally like, I'm a champion working at like 11 o'clock at night. And Mm -hmm. I can, that's like when I'm normally the most productive is at night. But I was so out of it that I like messed up like the order of how things were supposed to be or forgot one night. I just completely forgot to plan the post for the next Mm -hmm. day or um, whatever. So that's kind of been tough because I don't want to be that person on the crew right now. But with all the stuff that we always have going on. It's, yeah, it's not the best feeling. Have you thought about like the difference between where you were at six weeks pregnant and your previous one and like starting street parking and like where our journey was there and now where the journey is now and the help that you do have? Like, have you, what have you thought about that? There's like pros and cons, right? Because when, okay, so let's say like when I was uh, six weeks pregnant before, if I, First of all, there was no posting schedule. There was no, ske- we would literally post a workout at like 5 p.m. the night before. Mm-hmm. We would film it at like 4 p.m. the day before and I would enter it after that. So there wasn't as much of a regimented schedule. Um, and if something fell to the wayside, pretty much me and you, and even sometimes only me, because I didn't always tell you what I was planning on doing, Yeah, I would be the only person that knew mm-hmm. that it was messed up. Um, the we didn't have official members yet no, because we didn't have official members until January. So no one was paying us or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like a fun hobby side project at this point that last time Mm -hmm. I had told my coworkers at progenics that I was pregnant. So they were, and the thing is, it's kind of, um, nice is I, when I worked for progenics, I was almost like the, um, like the little sister Mm -hmm. or the daughter. And so I got away with a lot, (laughs) Mm -hmm. like they just wanted to take care of me and make sure I was okay. And so I could, you know, I could really tell them that I wasn't feeling very good and they were super, uh, they were about it. Yeah. They were able to help me a lot. So I, I didn't ever feel like I was like letting anyone down last time. What advice do you have for women that are pregnant six weeks or in the same first trimester that do have regular jobs and that like in the corporate world or in regular jobs, not as many people are sentimental Yeah. with like right now you're in a good position. You have a lot of people that understand and one, I mean you, we own the business. So 
yeah, but what are you gonna do? yeah, what are you gonna do, right? Like, <laughs> what are you um, gonna do, Nelson? But I mean, <laughs> yeah. What would, what advice would you give for these women that are going through like your struggles? Um, obviously. So I've never had like a super corporate job. Yeah. Like pretty much ever. Even when I worked for CrossFit, it was mm-hmm. very tight knit and close. Like I was close to the, the people that I worked with very much. Um, I would tell. I I personally would tell my superiors like. I wouldn't wait for the whole like first trimester being over type situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I know it's a real struggle for women because as soon as you become a mom and that's like from the moment that someone finds out you're pregnant, if you have a certain type of male boss, they mm-hmm. it's not like this exciting moment for them. It's like a they treat you different. It's like and a liability. They, they're like, oh, okay, we'll count down the days till she's going to take her maternity leave. Yeah. And then who knows if she'll come back and she's right. probably going to be throwing up in the bathroom and it's uh-huh. more of an annoyance for them. So liability, I, yeah. Yeah, so for I sure. totally understand why people would panic, honestly, mm-hmm. um, especially if the pregnancy wasn't planned. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you can at least get someone on your side to be like, hey, it might not even be your boss, maybe a coworker, like, hey, can you just like r- remind me of this stuff or like, help cover for me for this if I am like super sick one day or something. I know I read in an article somewhere like uh, if you're planning on getting pregnant, save up all your sick days beforehand so that you can use them during that first trimester so that you don't have to tell anybody that you're pregnant. You can just be sick. Nice. If that's the route no, no, you want to go. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's t- I mean, it's tough because you're right. Like it's in certain places it's seen as like, a, oh, well, there goes Susan, like mm-hmm. her career's over, you know, That's and that sucks. Yeah. That's tough. yeah. All right, well, I mean, it sounds like, you know, things are going really good for, uh, you know, for the most part. Yeah, um, I've been weighing myself and I've been taking pictures. Nice. Because I, lo- I mean, it's just no, it's interesting. Cool. I think it's cool to see the body change and everything. Um, and because I know people always want that info. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've gained already two and a half pounds, which I think is all in my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. My boobs started hurting this week. Yeah. Do you uh, do you feel you can tell right away? You showed us a picture of like a 16 day difference. Mm-hmm. How much do you feel like your body's like changed so rapidly this time around? You know, what? I actually think it was more like right away when we were talking about it at first. Mm-hmm. I actually think that there was more like water retention then than there is now. Right. Um, because I felt like it was looked more puffy like maybe a week ago. Mm-hmm. Um. And now it's, I don't know, regulating or something. But, yeah, I mean, just like last time, I gained all the weight in my legs and my butt first. Like, my pants yeah. were so tight before on my legs before anything else. And I can feel that now. Like, when I was working out today and the other day, I could feel it, like, my legs rubbing together more. Or even these pants that I'm wearing right now, I could feel them. Like, they're tighter on my legs. Yeah. Uh, and I posted a video of me working out today. And I had my shirt off and everything, and I'm just like waiting for someone to be like, "Are you pregnant?" Right. Um, but it's funny because I had posted a video about how my belly was still round when I would work out, like a week before we found out that I was pregnant. So maybe that mm-hmm. bought me some time. It, maybe, maybe for sure. Yeah. Nice. And um, so yeah, I've, I started at 138.5 pounds, and I'm like 141 pounds now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is almost exactly what I started at when. I was pregnant with Knox. A little bit lighter. Nice. Yeah. What about your weight? Because uh, you're getting light over here, my uh, friend. I know. I'm I'm losing weight. But I think it's in a very positive way. Do I, you think Nelson is going to be stronger than you soon? N- no. Okay. But <laughs> 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 but uh, and if he is, it's good for him. You know, it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, I've been losing the weight naturally because actually since since we did the jack by june for the street parking challenge i made a decision to really cut out like dairy from the coffee uh the butter from my bulletproof coffee and started using the mct oil um what else uh less cheese like i don't really eat cheese cheese as heavy as i used to at all like i mean last night we bought an aged cheese and we just chipped that like very tiny tiny pieces but i think mostly Knox and my mom Eat the cheese. We'll have pizza. Like tonight, we're gonna order pizza we randomly, order but pizza. it's like not. We'll have like two slices. Yeah, but I feel like I've started taking way more control of all these eating habits that were still kind of lingering that I knew weren't the best for me. 
and I've been like staying consistent with my working out. So the weights just, what else did I start doing? I actually started using um, more of like what the street parking template recommends for my performance and cut down on the amount of carbs mm -hmm. that I was putting in my meals and I'll still keep my protein and the fat the same. And I still feel great. I don't feel like I'm starving. Every now and then, of course, like depending on the intensity of a workout, I might find myself like chipping, munching more on some chips and stuff. But I also know now that if I'm gonna be munching more on chips, maybe tone down the carbohydrates on the yeah, rice. Right? But it's been like a learning process. It's been like four years of like educating myself on this whole thing. And so it hasn't been like 100% or, or nothing. It's been just, just like small, little, small things. little things here and there. So I feel like I'm in control and not losing it because then I don't wanna get demotivated. I'm curious to see how the winter is going to be, though, because obviously that's that cozy weather Where and the like cappuccinos the, like, yeah, and like the, the, milk. the milk and stuff like that. But I feel like Bob's MCT oil was like a big savior for us. Yeah, I love it because I mean, it, I can drink coffee black. No problem. I've gotten to that point, too, which is good. But just in case if I ever want that little creamer tasting kind of item in there or even the illusion of it looking like creamer. The MCT oil, it kind of helps out a yeah, lot for right? sure. Absolutely. And um, we went to the doctor. Yeah, we went to the doctor. Kind of. Was, I feel I mean, like, we, did we like, go yeah. to the doctor, though? No, it was just they asked us <laughs> our information. They talked insurance. Let's talk talked about politics. that. Talked that, <laughs> Let's talk about that interview that we got from the medical assistant. It's so awkward. It is. so weird. I mean, it just, again, it goes to show how unhealthy like the like, questions that they ask you, but then it's like, if I was doing this stuff or if I had these problems, I'm probably not going to tell some random stranger about it. Like they would ask like, uh, if I do drugs or like if I plan on continuing to do drugs, like, like what medications yeah. I take, like, and then like with both of us sitting right there, they would like with a completely straight face and like, no, like not even looking up from the paper. They like basically ask if, I'm abused in my home or like if I'm afraid to go home at night and I'm like, well, what the, like, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. And I get like why they're doing it, but I just sure. feel like if someone really had that problem, there's gotta be a better way or time or something. It's just like so insensitive. Like maybe call from there at some point yeah. and, and say we have a few uh, further questions. I don't know, but I just feel like if you had like an abusive spouse or something, with it them sitting impersonal. right there is probably not the best time to ask. Yeah, it was like a machine. They're just like they're just like reading off this paper and they don't care about it at all. Actually, um, it's just again for it's liability like legally, for, yeah, yeah. for them. But there and wasn't anything. I mean, it just for me, I could, I got a little excited just because you know that's like the first steps into the beginning of the journey with the whole. Okay, then there comes the ultrasound, then yeah. comes the other ones, and multiple ultrasounds, and now like things start becoming. A reality you know what didn't we have um when i had Knox? didn't we have that little thing where i could hear his heartbeat whenever i, I thought wanted? about that the other day but we'll order another one it's like oh what 20 my bucks gosh. yeah that but thing was super cool i don't know if it would be strong enough for what's going on in there no, right not now yet. i don't think so but for Knox to kind of listen in on it yeah we had like a little heartbeat thing where i could hear Knox's heartbeat whenever i wanted mm -hmm. that was really cool yeah um i forgot about that yeah i know within the next couple of weeks we're like trying to find a birthing center that's on the yes. on the list of things to do. Well, I think the the route that I'm going to go. So when I had Knox, for those of you that don't know, I had Knox in a birthing center in Irvine, California. It was called South Coast Midwifery, and it was so awesome. It was amazing. And I had a doula, mm -hmm. um, which was not somebody who worked at the midwifery. It was like someone. So the midwives actually delivered the baby. They're like, for be lack of a better word, the doctors. And then the doula is like the person who's there just for me to make sure I'm okay, like, emotionally and psychologically and physically and you too mm -hmm. um to kind of like tell julian what to do or tell him when to leave me alone or whatever so you have to get that person separately we didn't get our doula until i was like almost due yeah last time so i want to get the i think the path that i might try is finding a doula first and having that person help recommend for sure the mid the midwives and stuff here we were we got really lucky with that place because it was so close to our house and yeah, everything we did. But um, last time after I got past the first trimester, I pretty much just went to appointments only at the midwives. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would randomly go to some ultrasounds. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just so much more personal. They see, they at least in my experience, I'm sure there's some great doctors and hospitals out there. I just haven't had found one yet. Um, 
they, at the midwives that I've worked with seem to care so much more and they take so much more time to answer your questions and all of that stuff. So we will try to find something here. It's going to be tough to replicate what we had last time though. Yeah. Well, we're approaching week seven. Mm -hmm. Um, so on Friday we'll go hopefully hear the heartbeat. Yes. Oh, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I have not missed a workout yet. Yes. I have not wanted to work out m most of the time. Yeah, you were tired today. You texted me while I was upstairs. Knox, I know. I was like, I think you should just go do something. You're not not gonna you're not gonna regret it. So. Yeah, and so yeah. one of the other street parking members who's two weeks further along than I am, she didn't know that I was pregnant, but she's been like really been like, what do I do? I'm so tired. So finally today I was like, okay. Fine, I'm just gonna tell you I'm pregnant too. Like, just go work out mm -hmm. <laughs> so that she would know that I'm not just being a brat. But um, yeah, she was like, well, how do you find the energy to work out in the first trimester? And I was like, I just, I don't. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have energy to go to work either, but you just, you kind of have to live your life still and do what yeah. you do and you just do it. And um, when I was filming the vlog today, it was like, I on in one of the rest periods, I was like, I wanted to quit after the first round literally no one would know if I wasn't doing this workout. And even if I told someone, they would get, think that I have a totally valid reason to not want to work out. But you just like, you can't let those thoughts like keep you from doing that. And of course, like there's times and there's people that, hey, you know what, like take a rest day. It's going to be okay. But as soon as you like start taking one and then two, and then mm -hmm. it's really hard to get back into it. And that's where yeah. people struggle. So just go in and do something like the whole more than nothing thing, right? It's yep. like... Even if I only did one round and quit, at least I stayed consistent with my workout schedule. So yeah. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're excited about Friday, about the heartbeat. And then the next week we're going out of town. So we're gonna have to like whole travel situation. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Hopefully our plan is to announce it before we go so that I don't have to worry about feeling weird and like keeping secrets from all these members that we're about to see. Exactly. I mean, we have some a funny reveal coming we up, sure so do. I can't wait for that to be dropped for sure. Yep. But uh, I think that's I think that's good. I think that recaps this past week. Um, it's been awesome to see you powering through. Just do it. I mean, that's, Just, that's yep. it. Like you don't you, you can't overthink it too much. Um, but yeah, all right, on to week seven, all and right. we'll keep you guys. Uh, we'll check in next week, and keep keep this rolling. We're gonna go all through all forty weeks. Yes, we are to let you guys know the experience and if somebody else finds themselves pregnant <laughs> and wants to hear from someone else who is in their sta same stage, I think this will be cool to check out. So we'll see you guys in a week for week six to seven. Nice. All right, guys, take care.